Welcome to my back porch. In fact, I'm gonna give you a little view from my back porch. That is a creek. There's a house, but that's a creek. So this is my morning view. This is where I have coffee in the morning. And I'm sitting on my porch and I thought I'd do a little vlog for you with this pretty background. Welcome to my porch. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear, but there's like birds and bugs that you can hear out here. So this is a raw talk video, more conversational kind of. I mean, it's not like you're talking to me. <laughs> I've had a lot of people ask me different questions and I just thought I'd sit with my little coffee cup and my coffee. There's been a theme I think you probably know around like women empowerment. So I just thought I'd share my journey with discovering my value, not just as a woman, but as a person, but I think also as a woman. I like I shared this quote, which is right here. Whether you're a man or a woman. Not everyone's gonna see our value, our full value. We are amazing. As my good friend Lindsay Rasmussen always says, we are the ones who teach people how to treat us. Right? So, in order for people to value us, we have to value ourselves and walk in that. So, that's something I've had to learn the hard way. It's like kind of noisy because I hear all these birds. And it goes all the way back to childhood. Isn't that funny how everything really goes back to childhood? Like everything and if you didn't know that now you know and you can think about it <laughs> it changed my life when i realized that in college when i started counseling for the first time not counseling others actually going to counseling um and then i've been a firm believer of counseling ever since and um that was the first time i started understanding why i had issues yeah let me tell you where it all began all began uh when i look back on my life and even as a child, I learned to value myself in a particular way. As a youngest, I was a little bit insecure and I wanted to be, be like around the cool big kids. I was always like the little one and a little bit more sensitive and a little bit like more emotional, little child Bray here. <laughs> so then I kind of felt a little bit lesser than people sometimes and that was all in my head. It's not like people told me that. I actually didn't grow up with people telling me that. My family's amazing. I like had a really solid environment and I know not everyone does. And so I'm really grateful for that. But I think when that changed was when uh, my family moved and I was in fourth grade and suddenly I became the new kid on the block. I was like the new girl in school, the new one. And I went to a small school, it's a private school. And so everyone was like friends and everyone knew each other. And there were some cool girls that like wanted to be my friend, but they like treated me like crap. <laughs> I could never say anything right and I could never do anything right. They'd make fun of me, but then they'd like want to be my best friend. So they'd like pretend to be my best friend one day. And then the next day they'd be gossiping and convincing people of like stupid <laughs> I didn't say shit back then, but just things like that. Everyone has experienced an element of like bullying and I experienced an element of bullying, but I put up with it because I thought I was like being nice. And there was this phrase that went around a lot as a kid. It was called being Christ-like. I grew up in the church, my dad's a pastor, I love it, I'm passionate about it, but I was always afraid to do anything wrong, so I always wanted to be nice, and I wanted to do things right, and so I was just nice to people, even if they treated me like crap. <laughs> so anyway, and then, to make things worse, every year, okay, I'm sorry about this bird, if you hear this bird, shh, bird, shh. Okay, to make things worse, every year, I got this award in school called the Most Christ-like Award. <laughs> which sounds, oh, yay, awesome, you must be awesome. But it was a lot of pressure to like be the most Christ-like and keep being the most Christ-like. So I kind of put up with a lot of bad treatment thinking it was good. What I didn't realize I was doing is I was training myself to be treated poorly, believing that was okay, good. These are my own beliefs, by the way. I'm not like blaming people because we all have our own like stories and experiences we go through. We learn things the hard way. That would be me in this situation. So at a young age, I learned to kind of put up with being treated poorly, thinking it was all for the best of other people. Fast forward some years and 
I didn't realize how much that caused me to believe I was maybe not worth being treated a certain way or paid a certain way. I just took whatever was given up. I was the nice one and I was kind of the peacekeeper. So if someone was not paying me what I was worth, okay, that's fine, whatever. If someone was just kind of treating me bad behind my back, that's fine, like it happens. I easily fell into manipulative relationships, even if it seems good. I fell into manipulative relationships in the church context where I don't know, people just took advantage of people with like kind hearts, <laughs> with a willingness to do whatever it takes. And I was like willing to help all the time and willing to be there and support and I cared about people, but at the same time, I was easily taken advantage of as a nice person, I think. And I kept friendships that didn't treat me very well. I found myself in relationships where I was like helping people all the time. Anyway, I kind of did teach people how to treat me because of what I like allowed and what I put up with. It's very much on me, but it took me a while to learn this <laughs> and realize what I was doing. <sighs> Sip. I'm at the end of my coffee, so I'm savoring the last sips. <laughs> I'm telling you this in hopes that maybe you'll start realizing patterns in your own life. Don't get me wrong, I've had amazing friendships and relationships and situations for sure. But I just noticed I had a pattern of allowing some things that were not good. And it kept happening over and over. It came out in my work environment, what I was willing to put up with. Now, one thing I never did put up with is sexual harassment. That's something that was extremely, like, I could not deal. I could not deal. There's no tolerance for that in my family. And my dad is like super protective, which is amazing. And I'm so grateful for that. So in terms of my like sexual being and my physical person, I felt like my value is more than my looks and beauty or anything like that. My dad was super, super intentional about making sure that I knew that. And I think that's so important to receive from a man that like your value is not just in your appearance and your looks. But I saw so many, I saw a lot of women think that don't get me wrong I wrestle with that belief sometimes because think about it our culture praises sexuality sex cells and women and their bodies and I value being healthy and fit and I like to be beautiful and there's a difference between like, embracing that and and relying on that to be your sole source of value anyway I still have battled and wrestled with that especially being in an industry where I'm on camera and I'm in photos and I think about that every single day. I have to remind myself of where my true value lies. But yeah, I've had a fight for my value in the workforce, in my pay, in um, women are often paid less than men. But it's fascinating because I read this thing once, I don't remember where I read it, but basically, I think a lot of women have learned passivity. We've learned to be passive as if it's not okay to stand up for what we know is right without being like a bitch about it. We don't have to be a bitch about it, honestly. All we have to do is know our value and we can just walk in it and be like, hey, this is my value. If I'm valuable to you, if not, okay, moving on. Let's be honest, I have been a bitch at times. Real. But I don't think I always have to be that way. But basically, I think sometimes we don't have because we don't ask and it's up to us to be the ones to be like, hey, this is my value, this is what I'm worth, this is whatever it is, whether it's pay, whether it's how people treat us. I've had to stand up for myself in how people treat me. I've had to stand up for myself in how people pay me. I've had to say no to a lot. And sometimes it's scary to say no because I'm like, oh, is there gonna be another opportunity that comes around? And there always is. If I say no to something that is not in line with how I think I'm valued and what my worth is, it's always actually opened up a pathway to receive better opportunities around people that do value me or around work that values me and sees my value and is willing to pay for my value or even friendships that value me or relationships. I'll probably go into more detail in certain vlogs in the future, but what we put up with in relationships is huge. We all have our own messes. Nobody's perfect. We're all human. We make mistakes. But I think there's a difference between having friendships and relationships where people acknowledge their mistakes and how maybe they mistreat people and change that behavior versus just either admitting to it and not changing or two just avoiding it or not even admitting to their human behavior that's not good 
because let's be honest, we all have human behavior that's not very good. Anyway, sometimes it's hard to let go of friendships or, or relationships, romantic relationships, where you're not treated very well or honestly, I think we draw people to us that value us in the way that we value ourselves. I know it's crazy, but I've like learned this about myself. I, I used to be in relationships where I felt like I had to prove myself all the time. As if like, I felt like my worth was based on my accomplishments, which is a real thing. I mean, no one should have to convince someone that they're amazing. <laughs> Guys, you're amazing. I'm amazing. You and me both, yo, boom. Yeah, so we don't have to convince people that. We just have to be ourselves. Yeah. Anyway, I'm still figuring it all out. Cheers to that. It's so loud, these birds, but they're lovely. Anyway, yeah, so this is kind of like a like blanket story around my discovery. Let me know your thoughts below. And if you want to hear anything else in more detail, I'm totally open to sharing more. I just kind of wanted to do a blanket. Oh, hello, son. <laughs> I wanted to do a blanket convo, raw convo with my little coffee out here. See what your insight is and see what you're more interested in and I'll go into more detail and whatever those are. Guys, I hope you have an amazing day. Go be your awesome self today. I will be my awesome self. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up, please. And please subscribe and please share this with a friend who may value, who may um, share with a friend and have a wonderful day. Love you.